So hi, my name is Arisha Chen. You guys can call me Jesse. And today I'm gonna discuss on what are potential risks associated with offshore oil rigs in Newfoundland. So this is a table of contents. So we're gonna first take a look at the background information, such as what is the oil spilled. Then we're gonna move on to the largest spilt on 2009, 2018 in Newfoundland. And we're gonna take a look at the causes and the aftermath. Then we're gonna continue on the uh, potential risk from the oil spilt, such as marine habitat damages. And then we're gonna take a look at the Canada, Canada government's actions and the solution and the steps. So first is the introduction, which is the location and background information. The very big question, what is oil spilled? An oil spilled is the leakage of the petroleum onto the surface of the large body of water and continue. It is the most visible and perhaps the most hazardous of all of the environmental risks associated with the offshore oil industry. Oil can enter the oil from, oil can enter the ocean from drilling platforms tankers or floating production, storage and offloading vessel, FPSOS, large vessels anchored near the drilling platform, which process and store oil until it is shipped to the land. Spills may occur for a variety of reasons, including equipment failure, human error, tank rupture, and tanker accident. The harsh and often unpredictable weather condition of the North Atlantic may increase the likelihood of accident as seeds or of spills during the transfer of oil from FPSOS to shutter tankers. And here are the locations of the Newfoundland oil field. So the image on the left is the map of the four offshore oil producing projects. So they are Hibinera, Terra Nova, White Rose, and Herbert, which produced first oil in the late 2017. And we're gonna take a look how the decision is made. So first, on February, 2018, the government of Newfoundland and Labrador announced a plan to increase oil production and allow more than a hundred new exploratory wells to be drilled in the offshore by 2030. Then, some of these wells are proposed in the area set aside to protect marine biodiversity, so a regional assessment, which aims to assess the cumulative effects, was conducted on exploratory drilling in the area. Despite significant data deficiency, the federal government decided to create regulations that will expert future exploratory drilling in the region from project-specific environmental impact assessments. Then we're going to learn the three stages of the offshore oil production. So the first one is the export exploration stage. So the explore, exploration stage includes the use of seismic surveys to locate potential oil deposits. Underwater air guns send sound passes down to the seabed, which are then reflected back to the surface. And the nature of the reflected sound indicates the likelihood of any oil in the area. Then it's the production stage. Once potential oil reserve has been located, exploratory drilling begins, followed by production drilling if sufficient quantity of oil are present. And drilling through the seabed produces rock cuttings and that becomes mixed with oil and drilling chemicals. Lastly is the shipping stage. The shutter tankers ship the crude oil to land. Much of the oil is produced in the Grand Bank is stored at a transshipment facility at Within Head, Placentia Bay until ocean going tankers takes it elsewhere to be refined. And overall oil spills are a major environmental concern associated with the shipping of oil. But of course it can occur during any stage in the production process. Move on to the largest oil spills in Newfoundland. And let's take a guess 
on the amount of oil spilled. So three, two, one. So in total, there's 250,000 liters spilled. The spilt create a oil slick to 21 kilom kilometer long and eight kilometer wide, almost the size of the Fogo Island. So according to CBC News, the largest in the history of Newfoundland and Labrador came from a leak in a flow line to the Zero's F FPSO, a floating production, storage, and offloading vessel about 350 kilometers southeast of St. John's. And the cause of the major oil spill is according to Husky's internal investigation into the incident found that the spill consists of two fluid releases the, com the company said that the incident happened as crews were circulating warm crew to warm up the float lines that fed oil to the vessel from the underwater walls. It occurred in the throw of the most intense storm in the world at that time, according to Environment Canada. And however, Husky was the first company to restart drilling cooperation after the rough weather. In a statement Tuesday, a spokesperson for uh, for Sinovis, which acquired Husky Energy in 2021, said the company took full responsibility of the spill. And there is also other major oil spills in Newfoundland. So the second largest oil spill was on November 2004, when the chemical failure caused a hundred, or uh, caused a thousand barrel of crude oil, which is roughly about 165. Thousand liter to flow into the ocean from Petro Canada Terra Nova FPSO. And also, for example, the Husky Energy reported 30 barrels of crude oil, which is about 4,470 meters, spilled into the ocean from the White Rose FPSO on September 2008. And while 300 liters of the crude oil spilled from the Habanera platform on January 2006. And, number, and move on to the potential risk from oil spilled. So the seabird is impacted by the oil industry and oil spilled. So the oiled bird has been washing up on the island beaches for decades and scientists estimated an average of 300,000 seabirds die each year due to oil pollution off the coast of Newfoundland and Labrador. Most type of the oil are less dense than water and therefore flow to the surface. Wind and waves spread oil into a large thin layers and can report it to coastal areas. Seabirds are among the and most, most affected by oil spills because they spend much time on the water surface. Oil can quickly penetrate a bird's feather and significantly decrease its ability to stay warm, dry, and afloat in the harsh environment of the North Atlantic. Birds may also ingest oil as they can clean up their feathers or it preys that has come into contact with oil. And there's also impact in the fishery industry. Oil spills can severely damage the um, maritime ecosystem. Fish and crustaceans are also at risk from oil spill. Oil is most harmful to fish in their egg, larval, and juvenile stage, and may affect species of commercial value. In addition, oil pollution can undermine commercial fishery by hurting the reputation of local fish products on the international market. Lastly, we're gonna uh, take a look at Canada government's actions. So last year, the Canadian parliament passed two controversial bills. So they are the C-69, changing environmental assessments to broader impact assessments, and C-48, oil tanker, Morantium uh, Moratorium Act, and yet the uncertainty and concerns regarding their implementation still remains. So let's take a deeper look at Bill C-69, which is the modernization of the 
Energy Board and Canadian Environmental Assessment Agency was passed by the Parliament in June 2019. Now major energy projects are reviewed by a new agency called the Canada Energy Regulator CER. CAPP is, in, is member and the oil and natural gas industry have many serious concerns regarding this legislation and its negative impacts on the industry and subsequently on employment, government revenue and prosperity in Canada. Then we're gonna take a deeper look in Bill C-48, which is a act respecting the regulation of vessels that transport crude oil or persistent oil to or from ports or marine installation located along British Columbia North Coast if implemented. This bill will prevent large oil tankers, those carrying more than 12,500 metric tons from anchoring, loading or unloading, and transporting oils and other petroleum products such as partially upgraded Buildment and synthetic oil along BC North Coast. The moratorium zone would extend from Canada Alaska, Alaska border to the northern tip of Vancouver Island. And in conclusion, we talked about the oil production background information, including the location of the oil project, decision made, and three stages of the oil production. And then we move on to the largest oil spilt, which is the 250,000 liter spilt. And the cause investigated by Husky Energy. And we also take a look at other, other major oil spills in the history of Newfoundland. Next is the potential risk, which is the seabird damage and the impact in fishery in fish fishery industry. Lastly, we also take a look at Canada's actions, which is there's two bills, the C-69 and C-48, but they're not, um, so they're only passed, but still concerned about the implementation. And that's all. Thanks, everyone. Bye.